Have you ever wondered why some people have so much hair on their body, while others are practically hairless? Okay, maybe that was a bit of a stretch. Or maybe you're curious to why people have different color hair. I mean, really, what's the point of that red hair? Hello and welcome. My name is Isabella Vo, and in a few short minutes, you will learn everything there is to know about the evolution of hair diversity across different ethnicities. Welcome to Adate. Today, humans around the world have various hair thickness, hair color, and hair distribution around the body. But why did this happen? Well, this all has to do with natural selection, which states that organisms best suited to the environment will survive longer and produce more offspring. This leads to evolution of the population and therefore results in hair diversity. Wait, okay, I can see the confused looks on your faces. Let me explain things for you more clearly. And yes, you, yet yeah, you in the back. I can see you sleeping, wake up. It's time to enter Edate. Okay, now let's get into the details. <laughs> so around 150,000 years ago, Homo sapiens finally populated all of Africa. Homo sapiens, by the way, are humans. <clears throat> Travis. So anyway, the theory to why people native to Africa today have little body hair is still disputed. However, the most prevalent theory is that as they migrated from the jungle to the hot savanna, there was a selection for less body hair as, there, as the temperatures increased. If you're wondering why you would need less body hair in a hot environment, well, the answer is quite simple. If you have a lot of hair around your body, well, it's like a fuzzy, fuzzy, fuzzy blanket. It acts as insulation and it would help you survive when you're in a cold environment. Man, Chewbacca must have been overheated all the time. You might be thinking, now wait, plenty of people who live in places like the Middle East or the Mediterranean have very thick body hair despite the hot temperatures. And yes, you're right, but they need the thick body hair to protect themselves against the infamous mosquito. No, not that mosquito. That mosquito! Anyway, Africans didn't need this adaptation because, well, I'll get into that. Anyway, I think it's time for nerd time. The novel Survival of the Sickest by Sharon Mola explains that the genetic disease sickle cell anemia uh, provides protection against malaria. Uh, individuals who are carriers of the disease sickle cell anemia, which means that they have one allele that codes for normal blood cells and one allele that codes for sickle blood cells, have a heterozygous advantage. Heterozygous advantage is when a hybrid of a species has a survival advantage over the homozygous individuals of the species. Homozygous, in case you forgot, Travis, is when two of the same allele code for a uh, gene. Anyway, there, because of this heterozygous advantage, there's a high frequency of people who are heterozygous for sickle cell anemia in Africa and thus they didn't need body hair because they didn't need to protect themselves against mosquitoes. So about 60,000 years ago, humans migrated to East Asia. However, about 30,000 years ago, a variant emerged called EDAR. This gene is a pleiotropic trait, which is where one gene affects more than one phenotypic character. This gene was linked to thicker scalp hair, larger sweat glands, and altered tooth shape. This is the same gene that is found in Native Americans. Native Americans are thought to have been descendants of East Asians who migrated to the Americas about 15,000 years ago. Interestingly enough, the evolution for Northern Europeans is very similar. Well, 
people migrated to Europe about 40,000 years ago and they evolved to have thicker and denser body hair because of the cold temperatures. This extra body hair kept them warm in the cold winters and snow and stuff like that. In addition, the reason why Europeans have lighter hair color is because of selection for lighter skin pigmentation. Okay, it's nerd time once again. So, okay. Coloring of an individual is a type of polygenic inheritance, which is when many genes are involved in controlling one trait. In this instance, there are many genes controlling the light hair, skin, and eye color of individuals. When early humans started move migrating to northern areas of Europe, there weren't as many UVR rays for vitamin D3 synthesis, which occurs in skin with higher amounts of melatonin. Individuals who have lighter skin pigmentation naturally produce more vitamin D, so they don't have to be out in the sun as much. Therefore, people of Northern European ancestry have lighter hair color because there was a selection for lighter skin tone. How, um, similarly, people who are, uh, originate from lower latitude areas of Europe have darker hair color because of selection for more amounts of melatonin. Likewise, red hair emerged in the population based upon sun exposure. Red hair was also linked to pale skin, so the, the mutation emerged because it allowed more efficient vitamin D production. Anyway, um, there have been some theories though that link red hair to interspecies breeding with Neanderthals. Try not to think about that too much. If this doesn't make sense to you or that you think this is strange, well, let me clear the facts for you. Oh, hello there. I didn't see you. Anyway, contrary to popular belief, Neanderthals had a very light hair and skin tone similar to Europeans that we see today. If that isn't crazy enough, we even found that there are Neanderthal DNA honor genes in people who have European and Asian descent. However, the red hair link theories that um, I told you about earlier have been refuted. Even though both Neanderthals and humans have the same uh, gene for red hair, which is MCR1, there was a different variant found in Neanderthals that we see in modern humans today. And last, but not least, Latin America! Yeah! Latin America is made up of a diverse mix of ethnicities, um, European, uh, um, Native American, and African. This is due to the fact that after the Europeans found America, they colonized the land and brought slaves. This is the reason why we see the type of distribution, the hair type we see today in people of Hispanic origin. Anyway, um, but there are a few differences, like the monobrow and um, some of the hair, uh, curly hair types. This is due to SNPs, single nucleotide polymorphisms. This is single nucleotide polymorphisms. You know what I said, I said it once before, <laughs> is when there is a single base pair change in a DNA sequence. DNA sequence. According to Darwin, in order for a population to evolve, variation exists in natural populations. Many more offspring are born each season than can possibly survive to maturity. As a result, there is a struggle for existence, which is competition. Characteristics beneficial in the struggle for existence will tend to become more common in the population, changing from the average characteristics of the population, which is called adaptations over long periods of time, and given a steady input of new variation into the population, these processes lead to the emergence of a new species. And that's it! Remember, everything about evolution is a theory. No one can know for sure what pressured us to look the way we do today. Except maybe acne. Anyway, all I know is that the information I gathered may be refuted later, but this is what scientists currently believe. However, I hope by watching this video it helped you better understand how evolution happens and why it occurs.
Thank you for watching. I'd like to thank my AP Biology teacher, Mrs. Petty from Heritage High School for helping me um, get through the entire year and learn all this crazy biology and everything like that. I'd also like to thank Ramon Walls for helping me film and edit this video, along with Autumn Wright for also helping me film portions of the video. And, um, la you know, I could thank uh, Travis Mendez for, you know, providing the photo for the hairless cat. And last but not least, I'd really like to thank Professor Mark Th Thomas, who is a professor of evolutionary genetics, who helped me research this topic and provide me with sources. Thank you. Closer. Okay, you want to hear a joke? What's hairier than a Neanderthal? Travis! <laughs> 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 <laughs>